Hey everyone, so previously we've finished off with the node label customization. In this video, we're going to be going through the tooltip and toolbar settings. Now, as always, within the sample report, you already have your predefined variations of the chart, so you can go and play around with them. Now, for us, we're going to go into the training view and actually build the chart from scratch. So, first things first, we're going to add an instance of the map visual. We're going to resize it a bit. And we're also going to quickly go into the formatting options and disabling the title since I'm not going to be using that. As for the setup, I'm going to go for latitude and longitude since those are mandatory. And then I'm going to scroll down a bit more and actually provide some columns into the tooltip field. And those are going to be name and radius. Now, next thing I'm going to do is open up the formatting options and actually open up node settings. Because what I want to do here is I first want to go through the individual node tooltips. So I want to disable the cluster. There we go. Now, if we scroll down a bit more, we can see tooltip settings. And here we have type and hyperlink. Yes, one of the features that our tooltip supports is actually active hyperlinks. So you can provide a URL from the data, and that is going to be displayed as an active link within the tooltip. Now, the options that you have here for the type are custom, and also Power BI built-in tooltip. For the custom tooltip, all you have to do is right-click on a node, and that is going to call out the tooltip. Now, if we close this, and if we go into the tooltip settings, we can change this to Power BI tooltip. And in this case, instead of actually clicking on a node, you just have to hover over it to get the tooltip visible. So there are two ways on how you can actually call this out for single nodes. Now, whenever you're using Power BI built-in tooltip, you can also use report page tooltips. And in this case, we're going to close the tooltip settings tab, scroll down a bit more and find regular tooltip tab. Here, we already can see that report page is active, but I haven't assigned one. So I'm going to change it from auto to report page tooltip. And now if I hover one particular node, you can see that it displays the custom tooltip page, which is a great feature from Power BI. Now, the other thing that we're going to quickly cover is going to be what happens when you actually have clustered nodes. So in this case, close up the tooltip, open up the tooltip settings first, and we're going to change the type to custom tooltip. And then we're going to go into the node settings and re-enable the clustering again. In this case, I'm also going to increase the node distance because I don't have too many nodes. I just want to make sure that I have at least some clusters. So we're going to increase this to 90. And now, for example, if I hover over this node and right click on it, you can see that I still call out a tooltip, but the difference here is that I actually can switch between the individual tooltips for all those nodes that are underneath it. So with these arrows, I can move back or forward and see all the information regarding every single node that is under the cluster. All right, but that's going to be it for the tooltip. The next thing we're going to be covering is going to be the toolbar items. So for the toolbar, let's go into the formatting options again and open up the toolbar tab. And you can see here that we actually have four different elements plus a dark mode. So the dark mode allows you to transition already existing elements into the lighter version of them. This is going to be really great when you're using, instead of you know white maps, you're using darker maps. So those elements can actually stand out and you can notice them. Now, as far as the elements themselves go, you have the zoom buttons, the scale identification, lasso tool, and reset. We're going to enable all of them. There we go. And we're going to be going through all of them. So first things first is going to be the zoom buttons. It does pretty much what the name says. You can either increase the zoom or decrease the zoom. Simple as that. Now, one thing that you can also do here is in the base layer, you can define what is the initial position for the map. And in our case, you can see that the reset button is actually already active. So if I click on it, it's going to take me back to that initial view to make sure that nothing has been changed from the moment I started to use the map. So that goes for that. Underneath it, we also have the scale. So for example, if I disable it, you can see these elements disappear now. I'm going to re-enable it. And the last but not least is the lasso tool. Clicking on it activates the possibility of drawing custom shapes. We talked about the way on how you can draw the shapes in the initial setups and interactions section of these videos. So you can easily create your own shape, for example, right here. You can close up the shape and afterwards use that shape for additional filtering capabilities. All right, that's going to be it for the tooltip and toolbar, and I'll see you in the next video.